Hello everyone, this is Juan Sarmiento and today is Friday, July the 14th. Okay, so we have uh, the candidates that we picked last week. I already demonstrated that AVGO would not be a good candidate because it would be too, too expensive for us. So that's not going to work, okay? I would like to consider FedEx. Len, we have a uh, trade on already. CRM, we have another trade and Adobe, so FedEx and Adobe. And so let's start with Adobe. You can see in the chart that it's hitting a new high, volatility is very low, and the earnings came well ahead of expectations. So you can see that on the day of earnings, the stock rallied and then collapsed, but it usually happens that eventually when the markets recover, so does the stock that reported great earnings. They had already made a big move, so there's this uncertainty that whether that was too much of a move. Okay, so let's try and see if we can play this one. I'm choosing the strike price at 520, which is exactly where we are right now, where the stock is, okay? Plus 86 cents. Then we're gonna choose the back month options, which will be uh, 90 days or more, so that's why I choose October. And then uh, we pick the front month, should be between 28 and 35. So I, let's pick 35. So let's change this to uh, the August 18th as my expiration. Why do I choose about 30? Because those are the ones with the big, steep, steepest decline value curve for the option. So one, one month, one month to expiration is where the options begin to decline faster. Then we need to see whether the volatility is skewed properly, meaning that the volatility of the options I'm buying, <coughs> the options I'm buying are about the same volatility or a little less or not too much, very little. Uh, more expensive than the volatility of the options that I'm selling. So you have those numbers here uh, in the trade where it says VOL, that's where the volatility is. So let's get our calculator here. And so we calculate the average of the back month options, 34 plus 27.55. Uh, divided by 2 and let's save that number clear the memory and add it and then do the same for the front month option 29.86 plus 26.04 divided by 2 and we subtract from the back month options and recall that it's less than 3% okay, so that's good all right, good, good. The, I already said that the earnings were great, that the stock has been moving at more than 10% over the last few weeks. I think that's pretty obvious. And then we wanna make sure that the stock is liquid. I don't think you have any trouble with Adobe, but this is the way you calculate. You use the mid, and the natural of your trade so that will be 97.45 minus 96 plus 0.53 and divide that by 97.65 and multiply by 100 and this is the percentage difference between the mid and the natural and that's 1.14 percent no problem there okay so if that is three percent then you question the volatility or the liquidity of that trade that we intend to enter it looks pretty good to me so let's enter that create duplicate order and confirm and send and the cost should not be more than 10 percent of my the value of my account. So that's good. I'm going to enter that, send that off. And I got filled. 
I don't have anything else to offer you, and there are unfortunately not many candidates, but we can see the current account. Let's examine the other two trades, CRM, and look at the risk graph, and this is working very well. Let me remind you that as you see the, this, the risk graph, let's remove everything else, the risk graph has what I call two smiley faces, okay? That's, uh, if the stock price goes above the smiley face, we could adjust by reducing the number of long calls or moving a long call, or two in this case, up, up to a higher strike price. I don't think we need to do that just yet. Let me delete all that. So we can see clearly, yeah, is below the smiley face just barely and my deltas are pretty tame at 28.9 that's just fine so I don't need to make any adjustments as we approach the August 11th then we can do a rollover we will consider that in a week or two let's go to the LEN trade and here again we have the smiley face and this below the smiley face good august 14th that's how many days to expiration 21 so there's plenty of time for these options to decrease in value and the extrinsic value of them should decrease as we approach expiration so no need to do anything there okay all right so up to the year up to date has not been doing very well and i want you to consider that the genie trade is a trade that is best entered when the volatility is low. So take a look at the VIX. And the volatility is pretty, pretty low, okay? What happens? We should be able to get new trades as earnings come in. What happens with the volatility when the volatility is high? Well, that's when you consider the cover call. And I'm keeping two accounts separately, okay? I'm keeping the, the Gini trade separately, but over the years I have found that um, the, the Gini trade has long periods in which we can't do much, so because the volatility may be high, okay? That's the time to consider the cover calls, all right? So be sure to watch my videos on the cover call because they are very informative and they will be a good complement to the G, to the Gini trade. Okay, so I'm keeping. You can keep it in two separate accounts, so so that you can see which one is most effective in which situations. But if you have the same account, it will be. If you only have an account, it will be quite balanced. If you keep a, a few Gini trades and a few cover calls. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you very much for joining me. See you next time. Bye bye.